passei. And I think we are live. I believe, hello, hello, hello. So hello chat, welcome to the tier 3 SSR Grand Prix around Silverstone. Let us know if our audio is all okay. My name is GB Sanderson, alongside me tonight is SSR Zampa. Good evening, good evening. We're missing Jamie tonight. Microphone issues. So uh, you've got me and GB talking about tea and biscuits instead tonight. Oh yes, lots of Team Biscuit chat as usual. Small grid, only 14 tonight. A few missing out because they didn't take the box, but we haven't heard anything from them, so maybe they couldn't make it. A few reserves not filling in either, so... Points to 12, only two are going to miss out. Hopefully they're not missing out through uh, crashing off. Yes, uh, like I said, a bit of a smaller grid at the moment. We're just right on board with Steel Curtain in the Alfa Romeo. And you can see everyone heading out on their first laps of the session at the moment. It looks like it's going to be Bradley Johnson who will be the first to cross the line to start a flying lap. He is in the Alfa Romeo, and also his teammate Steel Curtain tonight. So we'll ride on board with Bradley as he starts his first flying lap of the session. Bradley usually always the first one to set it. Bradley is a very, always very fast out the garage, isn't he? He always yeah. likes to get Pretty out and track nice and early. Fast back in the garage as well. Sorry, Just watching him at the moment, coming down the ones and straight into Brooklyn's crucial. You get the turn in right here, he misses the apex slightly, but that shouldn't cost him too much time. Decent exit out of Luffield there. It's always important to try and get the power down nice and early coming out of that corner because then you've got the long run down to the fast right hander there at Cops. Also, you've got to be careful you don't overrun it because the track limits are very strict at Cops on this year's like, game. Arrows just invalidated that Cops right behind Bradley as you step back. Ooh, and Bradley Johnson's had a bit of a moment there. Coming through my good some Beckett's. I think he got his wheels on the grass a little bit. Lost a few tenths of a second. That will no doubt cost him quite heavily. But for now, he's still managed to not invalidate his lap, so he will come up to the final couple of corners to set the first timed lap of the session. Quite a few coming and through. And crossing the line, it'll be through. a 128.4 from Bradley. So not while the fastest we saw yesterday in Tier 1, we saw the drivers get into the 124s, and we saw uh, in Tier 2 drivers get into the 125s, as Stupid Flanders has done with the 125. Point zero three six. He now goes into provisional pole. Radar goes the line in the McLaren as well. The Flanders very quick lap straight into the twenty fours. No fucking about. Probably see a twenty four here. Yeah. We'll see a few twenty fours. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a couple of twenty fours in this lobby as well. With the uh, with goes in second place with a twenty five six on his first time lap. And we've seen. Carl, Cod and Jack Carl cross the line as well. Still Curtin now goes into second place, so no one able to quite get the pace that Flanders has managed to get so far. His 125 flat definitely looking like the quickest time of the session at the moment. Hammer next to cross the line. And not the last couple of corners. His teammate in front invalidated. And straight back into the pits. Amateur followed by Bradley going into the pits, it looks like. Yeah, Bradley looks like he's doing the second lap. 
Uh, Hammer Joe goes P5 with 125.7. And we'll see Bradley jump up into P6 with a 127.2. But I wouldn't be surprised if most of us pull into pits next. Uh, Entrusted is coming around on his lap at the moment. Uh, look at all the tyres people are fitting. No one seems to be running a different strategy by going out on mediums. Everyone seems to be on the softs. Entrusted. Goes P3, another 125.5, so very close between him and Steel Curtain at the moment. But he just falls behind the Alfa Romeo by about three hundredths of a second. Uh, Say hello to the, Budweiser. Uh, we've got nine in the chat, someone's asking about championship standards. Let me just load it up. So we've got Wiffy P1 with 242 points. Radar P2, 222 and a half points. So not a lot splitting Wiffy and Radar, closely followed by Hammer Joe, 198. And it's a bit of a dip down to P4, get me my pipe, who's not racing today. He's not really making up any points. Then we've got Entrusted Rawlins and Budweiser on 98, 98 and 97. It isn't a lot to pay for. One bad result from Wiffy or Radar. You can see uh, Hammer Joe move up. Uh, it's very close in that little battle behind the outright leaders at the moment. Uh, we can see here Arrow is about to start his first flying lap of the session and it looks like SSR Sandwich is, is coming out of the pits as well. But with just over 10 minutes of the session to go it seems to still be Stupid Flanders who's going to set the provisional poll time at the moment at 125 0, seeing him over half a second quicker than his nearest competitor as it stands but I don't think we've seen the last of people yet we can see Samich is here on his outlap you've got Rawlings just behind him on his outlap we've also got some other drivers who have already set a lap coming back out for their second run Arrow has invalidated his lap time so he will have to come back around for another uh, another attempt. Landers can get a win there and get the 30 points. Could move up to P5 in the championship. He's one good result. Yeah, Flanders can definitely perhaps. be a competitor. Right up the top there. From, uh, yeah. from P2 to P7. Just over two temps. Yeah, we saw it in uh, tier, well, both tier 2 and tier 1 uh, this weekend where the lap times between people have been very close. I don't think we particularly have had a runaway uh, winner in any of the races so far either. I'm not too sure about the tier 2 race because I wasn't quite near the front in that race at all. Crop was but very tier 1 tier was two definitely. Crop was miles was ahead. Crop last night in tier 2. Oh, yes, Crop. Running away with it, the wet. And we saw last night in the uh, final race, last night was tier one, we saw uh, an absolute masterful strategy. Yeah, by. Who was it the one last night? Uh, Kurt. What in the Softs it? to Inters did it. What was it, 18 yeah, laps took, on the softs? Yeah, he took a set of soft tyres, so about 18, 17 or 18 laps. Uh, and pitted straight onto a set of, inter of intermediates as the rain came down. And well, it was a masterful strategy and it managed to get him the win by about just over 10 seconds I think it was in the end. We're on board at the moment with Arrow still. He's setting his lap time. Whereabouts is Arrow? Uh, it looks like... It looks like Rolling, he will be the next beyond. man to cross the line. Rollins is on a good lap here. Watching Rollins, he's yet to set a time. He'll be ne he'll be straight after Arrow. Yeah, so first of all, we have Arrow coming f coming round the final corner at Club. He crosses the line to go P9 with a 127.7. We'll jump straight to Rollins, who now comes around the final corner Look, and Sam goes P1 with a 124.7. That's a mega lap. 
And Samachus goes into P9 with a 26.2, but that is a mega lap, as Zampa says, from Rawlings. A 124.7 puts him over three tenths of a second clear of Flanders, who was looking so dominant himself. Radar has now jumped up into P2, but not quite into the 1 minute 24s there. He goes just 14 thousandths of a second ahead of Flanders into P2 and on the front row of the grid. So, great lap there from the McLaren. And he'll probably have time for one more run as well, so... Oh. Who knows, we might not see the end of them yet. Just on board with Wiffy, I just watched him invalidate. The uh, third to last corner. He's on for a good lap as well. Hammer Joe's about to cross the line. Hammer Joe comes across the line. P4. Goes P4 with, with a 25.1. Still, only one driver at the moment able to break into that 1 minute 24 lap time, which is SSR Rawlings in the Mercedes, still sitting on provisional pole with just over 6 minutes to go. Shout out to Worst in the chat. There's the deal. Shalom to the G Racing Association as well. Uh, Formal Maxim asking if there's going to be any rain in the race. We have not got any weather reports through as of yet, I don't think. Yeah, but drivers. we'll let you know as soon as we find out. If you can hear us, drivers, let us know. We don't know what the weather's going to be. Both races so far have been dry, quality wet race. Maybe it'll be the same here, I'm not sure. Please do let us know. Next to the line. John Next to the line will be Budweiser. He goes into P5. The 125.345. Decent lap there. And I think next up is going to be one of the Williams drivers. It is going to be Carl who comes around the final corner and improves to P10. Uh, so he goes up into P10 as we randomly get shown a Renault being pushed back into the garage there. Interesting camera angle to say the next. least. Bradley to the main cod, coming across the line. Bradley seemingly a few tenths down on his lap, it's still oh. there, and I think he runs a bit wide. Didn't invalidate that. Three tenths slower yeah, from Bradley. Yeah, three tenths slower. Yeah. And cod four tenths quicker. Not moved though. You're getting there. Yeah, stays P13. And the 128 flat. I'm sure him and Jack Carl will be wanting to improve their lap times quite a bit. If they can in their final running of the session. But Budweiser coming into Maggots and Beckett's on a lap. Oh, he's on an end lap. Ignore that. <laughs> yeah, five and a half seconds down on his best. I don't think that we'll be seeing any improvement on this time around from Budweiser. Steel Curtain's just started a flying lap. And Whiffy's going to be starting a lap anytime. Now he's just coming down the hill off. Yeah, we ride on board with Steel Curtain. For the time being, I think he will be one of the next ones actually setting his lap of the session. This might be his final time lap as well, but there's only four minutes left in this session now. I don't think he's going to have enough time to set a flyer, come into the pits and go back out on fresh rubber. And he invalidates, coming through Brooklyn's, oh, takes no. the curb a bit too tight and cuts it over the inside. And, well, he might actually have a chance to get back to the pits now and back out. Yeah, they're not going to be complete in this lap time. On board with Wiffy. Have a nice sector one so far, it's just about coming to the air straight. Then sector two, see if he goes purple. Not gone purple, he's a temp up this time. He's set to improve. Yeah, he needs to try and find what is nearly a second if he wants to challenge SSR Rawlings for pole here, but a 10th up on his lap as it stands, he's coming up towards Cox here, turns in just after the 50 meter board, hugs that inside line nicely, uh, they can run through Cox and watch him here through Maggots and Beckett. And you've got to be so committed through that section of corner, uh, section of track, and he does well there it seems. So he's that Maggots and it was Beckett, I'm sure he wouldn't mind saying that. Little knock up in the right point. Coming into the final couple of corners. 
gets that inside curve nicely and the second one needs to get on the power as quickly as he can coming through the club coming up to the line improves by two two and a half tenths but it only increases uh, improves his grid position to p6 as it stands two minutes left in the session i think that'll be the last lap we see from wifi today especially now he's already invalidated as well on this one uh, uh, next across the line right. Arrow as he says, oh. So two drivers further down the grid at the moment. Arrow is in P12, which in the race will be the final point to pay in position. We'll get one point for P12. And he comes up to the line here, and wants to improve his time, goes P10, breaking into the 1 minute 26, is on 26.958. Decent lap there, Jack Carl behind him. Stays in P14 despite improving his lap time. He's on 29.4, so that sees him quite some distance last by one and a half seconds behind Cod in P13, so not an ideal session there for Jack. Sure he'll uh, be pushing in the race. He's done well last week in a few places, but we've got a load of drivers coming up, so their final lap for the clock takes. But uh, who we got? Carl, MCG leading the pack, coming on the hangar straight. Bradley Johnson Carl going for a lap on his outlap at the moment. Bradley Johnson has gone out on track on a set of mediums here, so it'll be interesting to see if he can improve his lap time on the slower mediums. We're just riding on board at the moment with Rawlings, who is currently on his outlap. We are going to switch to the leading Williams of Carl, who's about to start his outlap. we going to see Flanders on a big push lap here as well. On board with Flanders, just watching him ready up. He's so close to the radar. <laughs> so close to the radar. Yes, yeah, so we'll ride on board with Flanders to his lap, see what sort of improvements he can make here. And um, we'll hop back to uh, uh, to Carl when he comes around towards the end of his lap to see what sort of progress he can make from P11 on the grid. But Flanders through the first couple of corners looking quite tidy. A little bit of a wiggle on the exit there of the loop. But coming down the lance and straight now he opens DRS. He'll be thinking about that braking zone coming into Brooklands. As we see Wiffy Winner retiring from P6. So he's corner a day in quality with a 125.3. listening to the engine revs on board with Flanders at the moment it's coming up towards Corps and keeps it nice and clean keeps it within the trap limits and now the all-important magnets and Beckett section it's crucial you get a good run out of Beckett's to get as quick uh, a quicker run as possible but he spins it and bins the car in the wall oh, the front no. left tire hanging off there oh, and, no. well, <laughs> Flanders is not going to be happy with that. He got a little bit on the grass coming through Beckett's. Oh, no. The rear wheels just touching the grass, spinning him round, and that's going to see him at P3 oh, no. at best. Not bad though. Saying all no. Yeah, okay, he's on the crash. Still P3, that's a good finish. In quality. Yeah, it's, it's still a good qualifying position. Finish. It's still a good qualifying position if he stays there. Still Kurt and Missy Apex so a little bit coming into Vale, but coming around the final corner. Goes P5 with 125.1. Ridiculously close here uh, between the drivers in second and fifth. Just over one and a half tenths of a second between Radar and Steel Curtain. Next up to the line is Rawlings. And he's just across the line. It sets. No. Go on. Go on. Last oh. man across the line, Radar. And he does improve, sets 124.9, but isn't able to beat the time of uh, SSR Rawlings. So it will be the Mercedes of Rawlings who takes pole position here for the Tier 3 race around Silverstone, followed by Radar in the McLaren, just over two and a half temps behind him 
and they will make up the front row of the grid. Flanders, despite uh, crashing out on his final run, he starts in P3, and he is the first of the drivers into the 1 minute 25s, with a 125.036. He has Hammer Joe in the, uh, the first of the Renaults alongside him on the front row, uh, sorry, on the second row. Uh, then we have Steel Curtain in P5 with the second Mercedes of Budweiser P6. Wiffy in the Ferrari, the one and only Ferrari in this race. He starts from P7 with Entrusted P8. The second Renault Samich is in P9 and Arrow in P10. Looking down the rest of the order, we have Carl Bradley, Cod and Jack Carl lining up at the back of the grid. So, well... Two drivers making it into the 1-24s. Um, what sort of predictions do you have for this race? Because it is ridiculously close between some of those guys in the top six. Yeah, tier three is always hard to predict. You, you, you know who the guys that are going to be up towards the top end, but you never know the order in which they're going to finish. Expect to see Radar and Wiffy scrapping for quite a bit of the time. Um, I, Rawlins got really good pace to get that 24-7 here. That's time trial times for me, so... If you can just it's um, quicker than time trial mistakes. times for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting up. to see who can get the best start as well because obviously starts are all important. If you get caught up in an incident, it could completely ruin your race. Whereas if you manage to get a few positions, you suddenly could find yourself in a battle that you didn't expect to be in. I would say uh, so, at the start of the race, point the camera at Wiffy because he does have. Very good start. He's very consistent with that. He's not going to be uh, treading lightly. And we are now going to wait. There will be a formation lap before we start this race. So we can have a look at the title standings. A little recap on those, I suppose, while they go around on their formation lap. But... Yeah, it should be a good race this around Solston. We've had two very good races so far this weekend with a full intermediate condition race to start the weekend with Tier 2 and then the uh, the dry to wet race of Tier 1. So a very good uh, very good couple of races so far this weekend. Yeah, no uh, safety cars either. I think we had one VSC maybe in uh, Tier uh... 1. Apart from that... Yeah, I think so. Nada. Nada. Very clean. And in the wet. It looks like it's going to be a dry race. Just still not a word. Um, yeah, one thing I will say, we touched on the standings, the constructor standings, Wiffy in the Ferrari, with his teammate Larry, who isn't racing today, almost 100 points clear at the top. 335 for Ferrari, McLaren in second, with uh, 249.5 points. And then you've got the mid-pack, Renault, Mercedes and Aston Martin, all within 30 points of each other. So, all to play for in the constructors as well. A lot of people missing teammates here today. And also, no one's really up before entrusted, so uh, off to a good start already. Yeah, love to see it. Things you love to see. That needs to be in exactly. the Reddit. Someone needs to put that in the Reddit. Right. <laughs> so now we sit and wait for the formation lap to begin. Pray for no glitches. <laughs> we play, pray for no glitches, no serious accidents between any of the drivers on the grid today. We've had a couple of very clean races already this season, so we'll be hoping for some more. Uh, luckily, it seems like no one's gone off the grid ridiculously fast thinking that that was the actual start of the race. I know I've done that once before. I know that people like, I think Lando Norris did it on the... Uh, on one of the F1 live streams earlier in the summer before the racing got back underway for this season. Don't see many Kimi Raikkonens in the field either, just taking it straight and not warming up the tyres, which is quite good.
not had any issues with the formation lap actually since we decided to turn it back on. It was off up until race, what, race 10? Race 11? We didn't have it on. Because the game was uh, just yeah. not stable enough. But it seems to be alright this weekend. We've had a blessed weekend so far. Oh, I just had Joe gets disqualified. It's probably a little bit of contact there. Game just chucks it on the grid with gold tyres. Don't know if anyone saw that JD is limitless. <laughs> what happened to him in TSRL? He got lagged out of session and rejoined. His tyres were the coldest temperature measurable in the universe. <laughs> One thing I've just noticed that might play into uh, coming to effect during this race Carl and Cod, both the Williams drivers, starting on the mediums. They're the only two drivers on the grid to be starting on the medium compounded tyre. Everyone else starting on the softs. So, uh, interesting strategy call there from the two Williams drivers. Yeah, could be, be a good shout. See, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what goes on with that. We are not sure what the weather's meant to do. Still, we haven't been told by any of the drivers. So, <laughs> we someone will have to us. wait and see. <laughs> Quick shout out to uh, the guys in the chat. We've got 20 viewers already. Shout out to Steph for the bits. You know what's up. Yes, and if you no, are new so. around here, make sure you hit that the follow man. button. Hamid Show has left the session. I'll get him, I've got him. And Hamid Joe's car has randomly gone before everyone else's has. Yeah, which exactly. is a Never an mind. interesting Never mind. one. Never mind. So Hamid Joe's car has already pulled away and is into the lead in session, but oh big smashing back round there, radar. Lost the left end radar. plate. Front left end plate gone for radar. Yeah, damage on the front wing there. Hammer Joe though currently leading. I'm not sure if it is actually him driving at the moment, but I don't think it is, but he might have a drive through penalty for that because he did pull away before the rest of the grid did by quite yeah. some way, so very not interesting his fault. start there. But um Occupational hazard of league racing these days, I suppose. As we see Bud, Wiffy, and Carl getting very close to these cops. They're all pretty close, there's a nice big train. Yeah, no one seems to have really broken away apart from Hammer Joe, but obviously that starts a bit questionable. We'll have to keep an eye on whether he does pull into the pit lane at all during uh, at the end of this first lap. Uh, back down the grid though. Bit of battling going on between Carl Arrow and Entrusted. Carl has really benefited from this start. He's already up three positions into P8 after starting in P11. And he moves his way up the order as we see a Mercedes going up the inside of the Ferrari of Wiffy. But Wiffy holds on to P5 there from Budweiser. In the background, we see Carl is uh, sorry, Entrusted. Is coming under a lot of pressure at the moment, and Bradley Johnson makes his way through into P9, and trusted following in behind. But out at the front, SSR Rawlings leads the way, with Hammer Joe now dropping back down into P2, so I'm not sure what's happened there, he's lost a lot of time. See, not Radar sure has come. I think he's just taken control of his car, Hammer Joe. I've sent him a couple of invites. He's back in now, it looks like he's got control. Doesn't have any damage. He's uh, more than likely going to drive through for that. See Radar quickly has dropped to the back that he's put on the hard tyres. Maybe he can go to the end on roads. Yeah, maybe try and do a one stop still Radar there, but I'm sure he'll be hoping for a safety car, but we haven't seen any so far this weekend, so he might not be best pleased by the end of it. As we uh, ride on board with Bradley Johnson, we ran very wide coming through Cots and that has left him under a lot of pressure from the Renault as Samich is behind him. We have a Mercedes round, that's a Sam Rawlings. It's Rawlings. What has happened to him? He lost the front left end plate. Reverses back onto the track, I'm not sure if that's him actually controlling the car there. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going or on there. Not. Like Cod's going to have a go at Jack Cole coming into the last couple of corners. It's all turned around. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there with Rawlings. He will now come into the pit lane, so that'll be him and Radar both suffering at the start. The, the front two, actually, 
from qualifying and now they're back to in the race and it is Hammer Joe who regains the lead of the race after that manic start. He leads the way from Flanders who is directly behind him. He has DRS, I'm sure the thing for making a move here is Hammer Joe lags all over the place coming yeah, down into very good um, connection to Hammer Joe. He's had a lag out, broken the timing somewhat. I think it's come back to life now. But Hammer Joe and Flanders are very happy with what's, go what's gone on so far. It looks like Flanders is going to have a go. He's going to be yeah, patient. So I think Flanders for the is probably. Flanders is probably a bit nervous to have a go here because riding on board with him, you can see how much Hammer Joe is liking around and keeps on uh, teleporting to Narnia and back here and there. But Flanders, I'm sure if he can okay. get past on the straight, he will do. Another girl, Flanders. Well, the other flag. He has DRS. Cod villain has gone off. He's detected two. Just after As you I'm see, and a wobble of cops. Sorry. Yeah, we see Flanders, Flanders has him. made the move up into P1, overtakes Hammer Joe. And now Flanders will try and create a gap and get out of that DRS range as soon as possible. Further down the grid, Bradley Johnson has had a bit of a moment coming out of Stowe. Yeah, and he's carrying on his lap. Couple of positions. I don't think he's got any damage, but he's had a wobble. I caught the end of it, didn't see what happened. But um, maybe he just had a wobble coming out of that corner. Doesn't right say so doesn't seem to have any damage at the moment. I think you're going to uh, see Steel Cut and have a go here, yeah, a bit with me. Yeah, we're riding on board with the Alpha Mare driver now, just up behind with the winner. I don't think he'll be able to have a go this time now, coming into Brooklyn's, but he's definitely one to keep an eye on if he manages to stick with him all the way to the hangar straight later on the lap. Damages is going to send any send it on Carl. It's, it looks like he's going to get the move done. Plenty of space left. Let's see there. Some faster tyre. Looks like he's got a move down. Although well, Carl has come back at him, he gets a much better run out of the left field there and goes round the outside from Woodcut and takes that position back. So Savage is dropping back down to P9. Great racing there from Carl to regain the position. Very opportunistic move indeed as we see him use some of his overtake fuel mode. But on the telemetry, so you can see he's used a hell of a lot of overtake. In fact, he's already down into single figures. So be Hammer be Joe's off. In management Hammer Joe's up. off. Hammer and Joe's Hammer off. Joe spun it. is now the next casualty of this race. Flanders is rubbing his eyes together right now. I didn't see what happened, I just saw Hammer Joe facing the no, wrong I way. I didn't either. We saw the yellow flags and the Renault facing the wrong direction, but it doesn't seem like he has any damage, so not sure quite what happened there, whether there was a collision between Boom. him and Flanders. Both sent it. Got the move done on turn one on uh, Carl here. He's going to be defending for his yeah, life. Carl. Carl will have DRS though here coming down the Wellington straight, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him move again as he gets very close to the rear left of Samichers. Well, coming out onto the straight, I think Samichers is going to be able to defend this as we see up ahead. Arrow going side by side with Hammer Joe, who likes through him several times, but Arrow getting that move done up into P6 in the house now. And Hammer Joe dropping further and further back after being P1 after Turn 1. He's now down into P7 and with his Renault teammate just up behind him. But Hammer Joe here thinking of making a move again on Arrow. He dives it up the inside going into Cops. Gets that move done and he's back up into P6. Arrow having to settle for P7. So good move there. Yeah, now right on board. On the a lot of battles. A lot of little battles going on. Hammer Joe looks like he's going to have the move covered here. Arrow a bit too far back to get back at him coming down behind the straight there. So Hammer Joe hangs on to that position. We see Budweiser has come into the pit lane for his first yeah. stop of the race. So it'll be interesting to see what tyres he puts on. It's quite an early pit stop, lap six. Just checking to see if he's got any damage. I don't think he's got any damage. No, he doesn't have any, Oh, he's getting a new front wing, but he's got no... He's got both end plates on his wing, so... Yeah, no visible damage there, but Budweiser puts on a set one. of the hard tyres. And he will come out as he glitches a bit down the pit lane there. He just... Harry Potter magics his way down the midway through the pit lane. But the number 69 in the Mercedes looks like he's going to come out in P11. 
about probably 10 seconds or so ahead of Radar and Rawlings, with Rawlings actually catching up to the back of Radar here, only a few seconds behind him. And Cod Villain is right at the back of the grid, well, well behind everyone else. He'll be absolutely praying for a safety car in this race. But looking elsewhere on the grid, go ahead. That's your bet, you're good. Look, see, just look at Cod to see board. if he's had like two pit stops or not. No, he didn't have a one stop. He did have an off though, he was off. He lost a lot of time when he was not in the grass, I think. Like me yesterday. We are arriving on board here with Samichers, so we'll be looking to try and catch up to the back of the Haas of Arrow. He's within a second, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a DRS move on the next lap here. But out of the front of the race, he's not got much airtime yet this Grand Prix because he's been quite dominant to be honest with everyone else making mistakes in and around him. Flanders leads the way by four and a half seconds ahead of the Ferrari Wiffy with Steel Curtain just over a second behind the Ferrari driver. We'll see if he gets DRS coming down his straight. And... Well, the DRS was flashing as though he had it available, but he didn't open it, so I'm not sure whether that was just a bit of a, uh, a bit of a uh, telemetry glitch or something for us there. But still, Curtin within a second of Wiffy at the moment, with Flanders trying to extend his lead at the front. He's getting it near five seconds now, so the Rebel driver trying to just break away from the pack. While you were uh, on board with Flanders, I just watched Sandwiches overtake Arrow from P6 and he's almost pulled out a second lead on Arrow, so maybe he's starting to drop off at this point and stuff for some drivers. Oh, as a... had a joke! Had a, I don't know what's going on with Hammer Joe, it looked like he was off the track there for me. He's kind of put it back onto the track, there's some has serious got... connection issues. Yeah, Hammer Joe, I think, has decided to use, as he has a bit of a wiggle, it looks like, they're coming out of Stowe. But it seems like Hammer Joe has plugged his Wi-Fi into a local McDonald's today because he is teleporting all over the place. It's really not the greatest connection for him at all. Um, the yellow flags is back. Yellow flags don't for Maggots and Beckett's. I think that was for Budweiser there. I think that was a ghost. That's the arrow pit. We'll go for a move. Oh no, Jack Cobbs! Had a spin. Jack Cobbs had a spin. On his way into Maggots Beckett's. Was that? No. No! Oh, no, God. that's always spun it again. Coming, try to get yeah. back on track. That was coming through turn one at Abbey. And Should be all right. well, I think he's. I'm guessing he's Got lost a the rear end. Decent gap behind. Yeah, behind. He's lose position. Yeah, I'm guessing he's probably lost the rear end coming through turn one and it's spun him off. That like turn two is a problem that I've been having quite a lot in the in the practice before this weekend. Just try to get a setup that worked where I didn't lose the rear end coming through turn one and it seems Jack Carl has fallen victim to that. He will probably come under pressure from Budweiser because I'm guessing those tyres will be a bit overheated after that. Aaron, Aaron, having a go at Carl. Gonna try and get his position back. But He's DRS tucked in behind straight. him. DRS in overtake mode. He uses up all available overtakes. Sends one up the inside into Stowe. Squeezes him out. Shuts the door and says, "Thank Good you very move. much. I'll have that position back." Carl did have a bit of a look there in the background. As you see, another spin further back for Rawlings. He Sir has retired Rawlings. from the session. Looks retired like he out on track though. He must have crashed coming out of cops. No, it's cars moving. Yeah, yeah it's He's on track lost it out of cops. No terminal damage, so I think he has just given up for today. Uh, after we'll get such it back a to the pits. Yeah, after such a strong qualifying performance, it's a shame that he's, his race has come to an end like that, and especially when you're tiring out on track. We, we do not like you doing that wherever possible. But we see Flanders here, out in the lead of the race, six and a half seconds clear of second place Wiffy. It seems like we won't be getting a safety car for SSR Rawlings crashing out on track there. So Flanders will be able to keep his dominant lead of the race. Oh, really going at it. 
Yeah, right Carl now. has got really back past our own on this lap. Quick shout out to the nice. crazy and uh, good Hazen Hunter for his follows on the old Twitch. Thank you for the new follows. Always much appreciated. If you are new around here, make sure you hit that follow button. I was going to do this. Throughout the week. I was going to send it. it. it Sends it on the inside. He does oh, send it up on the inside, but there's contact and he drifts his way through the corner. A bit eager. Just about keeps hold of it. Not lost a position, but he's lost a lot of time. I don't think he's got any damage either. I can't see any end plates missing yeah, or whatnot. No damage on the Haas, but he won't be best pleased about that. Whether Carl turned in on him, it wasn't quite clear from the camera angle there, but that could well be sensor stewards after the race. Cod could be sending it on Jack Carl here out of Magnus and Magnus. We're back. Ride on board the two men at the back of the grid. They're at the back of the grid in qualifying and they're at the back of the grid in the race as well. Jack Carl has pitted for a set of hard tyres, so both of them having made their well, supposedly one moment of stop of the race coming down the hangar straight at the moment. Cod has a look but decides against it, gets a wheel on the grass but manages to keep hold of the car and he is all over the back of that racing point at the moment and actually not too far behind them you have the lead driver who's just come through Stowe of Flanders who put, pulls into the pit lane as we ride on board with him slows down before the line and Flanders on his 9 lap old softs is going to come into the pit lane followed behind him by Whiffy and Steel Curtain who are both making their pit stops as is entrusted but Hammer Joe is going to stay out for another lap uh, Samiches also stays out for another lap, so two Renault drivers taking those soft tyres a lap longer than everyone else. They're going to see if the overcut works for them. Flanders is back out on a set of mediums, he's not been held up in pit stops. We've got Whiffy also heading out on a set of mediums, as does Steel Curtain, and as does Entrusted as well. Uh, um, interesting structure there from two Renault drivers to take their tyres a lap longer than everyone else. Hannah Joe just had a flick through the incidents, didn't get any sort of penalty for jumping the lights, so it's something we're going to have to look into. Drivers, I wouldn't Amazing. worry about that, we'll sort that out properly. Yeah, we'll probably watch Lucas stream back, maybe see how much time he might have gained or something like that, but yeah, it is a. Is a weird one. I don't think he was actually in control of his car at the start of the race no, either. So definitely I think that wasn't. was purely down to the AI. I was on board. The AI when just decided to go. It was about halfway around lap one. There's nothing. Not Riding his fault. Board. But Wiffy. Riding on board at the moment with Wiffy. He's up to the back of Bradley Johnson, who's on a old set of soft tyres. They've done ten laps, as have the softs of Hammer Joe and Samichers. And in fact, you can see on the minimap there, Hammer Joe has now pulled into the pit lane. And behind him, his teammate does the same thing. So the Renault boys here are actually going to go for a double stack. Up ahead, Flanders has got the move done up the inside of Carl. He makes his way back up into what will become P1 in this race. But we go oh, right yeah. on board here with Samichers and see yeah, how this is going to be a good double stack. Boys. This is going to be a yeah, good double stack. Yeah, see how well they do this double stack. Uh, he's going to lose probably about a second or so oh, from that, but almost perfectly executed there from Renault, so pretty impressive double stack. <laughs> pretty good. So that was a five yeah, second gap, so if you want a good double stack, you need a six second gap we can, can yes, draw from that. I reckon, yeah, definitely six or, seven, six or seven seconds, and you can execute a pretty good double stack, it seems, but good job there for the Renault boys. I don't think he's going to lose too, many, uh, too much time in any battles that he was in, but now back out at the front of this race, Stupid Flanders leading the way by two seconds from Carl, who is yet to make a pit stop, he's on 11 lap old mediums, so it'd be good to keep an eye on Carl actually during this race and see how long he can make those mediums last in, uh, in respect to everyone else who's now out on the mediums. I don't think we'll see any more pit stops. Will we? Unless we can get damaged. I don't think, I think everyone's done yeah, the strategy now. Yeah, I feel now. unless it's a safety car or a dramatic change in the weather from the blue skies we currently have, which is quite rare to see in the UK, but it 
Unless there's any changes in the Ooh. weather, I don't see anyone making any Radar. pit stops. Radar's gone at cops. Radar spins it at cops. Does have damage as well on the front oh, right end no. is missing. It's uh, another incident today for Radar. It's just not been his day. I'm not sure if he was battling sandwiches and got involved in a collision with him or whether he's just spun it himself there, but no, Radar going to have to pit um, again. No, there was no contact there, I don't believe. I was on board with him just as after it happened. I looked at the map. Sandwiches was quite a way down the road. I think Radar's just all hard tyres. Arrow and Bradley. Back into the last corner. Bradley's got the move done on Arrow. Pod not giving up on Jack Carl either. Just gonna have Pod and Jack Carl battling for this last point. Proper scrapping. Yes, uh, it's going to be a serious battle between them, but I, I wouldn't be surprised as we see actually Cod sending it up the inside here of Jack Carl side by side through Stowe gets the move done. But Jack Carl's going to fight him back coming into the final couple of corners, sticks the nose at the inside but doesn't manage to make the move stick. And that's him down into, well, P13, which is the last remaining place on the grid. But I think both of them here are going to overtake radar. SSR radar. Yeah. So, Crazy. Radar. Crazy. Oh, Cod losing a lot of time through turn one there. Arrow's picked up a few second time penalty. It's not the first time I've seen that this race. I think there's going to be quite a few penalties down the back of the grid. Yeah, the whole it seems at the moment that there's going to be quite an interesting battle here between the two slower drivers, arguably, of Jack and Cod. They're going to now be hunted down by SSR Radar, who's out on the fresh set of medium tyres. And it is Ooh. about three seconds behind Jack Carl. So, uh, while we're looking at the back of the grid, if he sent it around Carl, he's still yet to pit. He's only in P3 on the medium tyres. Could be going to start to think about it soon, but played out quite well for him. If he can time it right and get a good run on the softs, he's going to come out in front of him quickly. And he lets Steel Curtain through there by the looks of it as well, just didn't, decided it was not worth fighting him and Whiffy anymore. And, well, Flanders, Whiffy and Steel resuming the top three positions here. And they'll now try, well, Steel, Whiffy will try and catch up to Flanders who has this nearly seven and a half second lead out in front. But at the moment this looks like Flanders' race to lose right now. But behind them, Carl running around in P4, he is still yet to make his pit stop, I'm guessing he'll be hoping to go out on the set of softs towards the end of the race and do that, like Zampa said, in the next couple of laps. Uh, looking elsewhere on the grid, Radar has caught yeah. right up to the back of Jack Carl and Cod. Those three see some all action. DRS. Radar on the quick yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Radar go for it, and he is going to do that, in fact, before we even reach the DRS. Picked up a few loses a bit of time. Yeah, loses a bit of time there battling with yeah. Cod, but he's going to send it up the inside into Brooklands. Breaks lay out, breaks the Williams driver, gets the move done, and he is up into P12, the final point to pay in position. Now Cod, I'm sure, will be hoping to stick with the back of Radar and try and make the move on Jack Carl at the same time as Radar, I'm guessing, but he's already almost a second behind, so he runs the risk of being outside of DRS for both of them by the time they get out of Maggots and Beckett's, but we ride on board with Radar at the moment, right up the back of Jack Carl. Uh, loses the rear end a little bit there, coming through Beckett's, but manages to keep hold of the car, he is within DRS range, using overtake mode, DRS flap wide open in the back of the rear wing, he's going to send it up the inside into Stowe, and gets the job done up into P12, Jack, uh, P11 and Jack Carl back down to P12 with one and a half second gap back to Cod behind him. Now jump forward to battle over second, still Curtin yep. easily within a second of Whiffy here so he's going to get DRS coming down behind the straight. Could be seeing another time. move into Stone here. Entrusted as well, you know, they've got Carl and the old mediums. I'm going to send that. More likely to send it. Thinks twice, yeah, no. Going, Ooh, he oh, he is going to send it. Picks up a three, picks up three second right. time penalty. <laughs> but Carl, Carl now pits. pulling into the pit lane. Yeah. So Carl pits on P4 in this race. We'll see where he comes back out. Oh, uh, we'll also yeah, keep an eye on the tyres. 
absolute blind looking car. If he can get out, you get a good outlap here. He's out in front of bad but he's on for some good points on these soft tires. He's gonna be going a lot quicker than now. definitely getting close between him and Bradley. <coughs> so, we're just running on board at the moment. Still, Curtin is coming down the bottom the straight. He's got DRS open. Uh, he's going to be a bit too far back here to make a move into Brooklands, but he is all over the back of Whiffy at the moment. I'm sure the Ferrari driver will be feeling the, the pressure of seeing that Alfa Romeo all over his mirrors. Looking at Carl, he's on his way out of the pit lane. He's going to come out in P10. A couple of seconds behind Arrow, but obviously with a fresh set of soft tyres on. So I reckon we'll be seeing Carl try and get P8 in this race here. I reckon he'll yeah. have a good chance of catching up to Bradley by the end of this one. He's got 10 laps on the faster compound attire. And, well, P8 is some good solid points. And I've radar hunting him down come the end of the race, I feel. Yeah, it does have a 17 second gap though to try and close radar. It's going to be a big ass for him to do that in 10 laps, especially when he is on a slower set of mediums. But radar obviously got a lot of pace. We saw him get P2 in qualifying. I won't put past him closing down that gap quite a bit. Penalties will definitely come into it in this race. Uh, we've seen Entrusted has got past Hammer Joe on that lap and moved himself up into P4. So the two of them battling over P4 and P5. With still Curtin still all over the back of Whiffy, I'm sure he'll be wanting to make a move as soon as physically possible. Further Big back. Shout out to uh, AJ in the chat. A couple of bits coming out of ways. Thank you, Stan. I think you, AJ. 16 views at the moment. Drop follow. Just right on board at the moment with Cod in P13. He's battling with Jack Carl for the last points paying position of P12. Has DRS on him, but he's a bit, a bit of a way back to make any sort of attempt down into Stowe at the moment. And my Joe's gonna have a go at Entrusted out of my gets here. Two attempts off. And we also have Still Curtin and Whiffy who are quite close to each other. They're currently coming down the hangar straight, but as you can see, Still Curtin a bit of a way off. Looking at these two though, I think Still Curtin definitely has the Hammer Joe making the move there. Up the inside of Entrusted with overtake mode, and that puts him back up into P4 for the Renault. He loses the rear end a little bit out of Stowe, but keeps control of the lag. nicely. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's probably, probably, like. <laughs> probably a bit of like again there. Uh, Carl is within a second of Arrow now, so I expect to see some action between them in the coming laps. In fact, it could even himself. be this lap. Yeah, could have a go, definitely. Arrow going go, yeah. very, very far to the left hand side to get out of any sort of slipstream. Carl, though, a big move. Up in the rear wing, he's going to make the move up the inside from Stowe. He keeps it fairly clean. Side Oof. by side, Arrow hangs it round the outside, but Carl's going to send it. This is a good race. Sends it up the inside. Look at this. Yeah, great racing between the two of them here over P9, but Arrow holding on to the position for now. He's going to come back. Carl's still him. using overtake mode. He's going to have a go into oh. turn one. Up the oh, inside, so gets the move done. Wow. And that's Carl. That's Carl up into P9. Great racing between him and Arrow there. Might be able to pull away now on these tyres, make the most of them. The barrows medium start to fade slowly. So yeah, Arrow's got a good, good switch to do that man. as well. He yeah, definitely needs to do that too. because... And he holds on to the position, so... Carl definitely needs to try and break away from Arrow here and not get held up by him because he only has about seven laps left to try and chase down Bradley Johnson who is six seconds up the road behind them radar only 14 seconds behind Arrow he's closed in three seconds in the last few laps gonna need to need to close in a bit quicker than he is if he wants to catch him before the end of this race but radar definitely bearing down on them he's, it's gonna be a close one as to whether he can get uh, catch up to them and get past Arrow here for P10 and be a big ask the radar to come back that far. Radar probably definitely going to get some points, but how many? I'm not sure. Cod and Jack still going at it. Just about to come yeah, in. Very close to the two of them there. The ramps. 
What's this now? Round six, round seven for these two? I don't know. Yeah, these going two have three. been going at it up against each other like absolute titans in this race. It only fighting for a point in this race, but really providing some good entertainment between the two of them. Cod is going to get right up the back of Jack Carl here, but he's not going to make the move into Stow. Instead, I reckon he might have a think about it into the penultimate couple of corners. Oh. And all oh, there is contacts. No Bit damage. Of an early no damage. It seems. Yeah, damage Jack on Cod's Cod. car. And contact sure. between the two of them. Cod picks oh, up no. some damage to the front left end plate. And Lovely. well. Yeah, they had a good run. Cod. They had a good run. And they now actually have the leader, Stupid Flanders, bearing down the next day. As we ride on board, you can see the two of them just coming through turn four ahead of him. And they're going to have the leader coming up and potentially lapping them before the end of this race. But Flanders absolutely dominant at the moment. Eight and a half seconds clear of Wiffy with behind him still Curtin, still within a second. Quite interesting to see between the two of them actually here. Wiffy having 60, about 60% of his ERS remaining, whereas Wiffy only in the 20s or teens. So a lot better saving of that ERS, uh, the energy recovery system there from Steel. He'll be able to use that to his advantage in these closing laps to try and get up into P2, but he's just fallen outside of the, sec uh, the second barrier here. So, he might be outside yeah. of the DRS range on this lap. Hamadou's got, we're talking about batteries, Hamadou's got a nice 40 odd percent. And he's got one lap pressure tyres, it's not going to make much of a difference, but he's in with a shout catching up to Steel Curtain. Yeah, I mean, I'm riding on board with him and being taken to new worlds by this lag. I mean, he is <laughs> teleporting all over the track. We've never seen anything quite so majestic as a car going Ooh. through Maggots and Beckett's. Oh, Jack Cole! Has had a spin out of the last corner. Not taking any damage, but Cod now has got that position back. It's like their little mishap. Is Jack Cole now going to be able to make up 10 seconds <laughs> and scrap again for that point? Jeez. Yeah. A lot of incidents going on in this race, but quite a few of them seem to have been self made as well. So yeah. the drivers slipping up a bit in this race today. Perhaps they were expecting a wet race and weren't quite <laughs> quite so confident about dry running after seeing yesterday's races. But Jack Carl now getting out the way of the leaders. Let's hammer Joe through, and I think I don't see Jack Carl closing down a 10-second gap uh, before the end of the race unless uh, Cod is really going to suffer from that damage on his car. The main battle at the moment definitely seems to, uh, to be between Steel Curtain and Wiffy. Yeah. Steel Curtain is still just, just outside of the second. Penalty. Uh, people are still picking up penalties here in this race. Just, uh, just about to come up onto lap 22. Got Flanders coming up towards the final couple of corners at the moment to start his 20 second lap of this Silverstone circuit. Third longest circuit on the calendar after Spa and Baku. Of course we've already been to Baku, we'll be going to Spa in a few races time. Cod Villain pits from P12. It's an interesting strategy call there, I'm guessing he'll be going for a set of the soft tyres for the last few laps and also fixing his, uh, the nose of his car, but Jack Carl doesn't pit, so Cod going to have an absolute mountain to climb if he wants to get this final point. I'm very surprised he has pit at all, to be honest. Mountain to climb, uh, yeah, I think so. He's going to, it says yeah, three I'm... seconds down at the moment, but... Yeah, that'll definitely go up quite substantially when he comes out of the pit lane. And like I say, I'm a bit surprised he has pitted here. I mean, he had quite a dominant lead over Jack Carl. I would have thought he would have been able to nurse the tyres just four more laps. So obviously being a lap down as well, he, do, he does have to only do one. Uh, he does have to do one fewer lap than the leader. But uh, he followed from just past there, but he even got a question. How do we feel about Thunder Civix? I don't. I just don't. But I don't know about the GP. <laughs> I don't feel strongly about them. I generally don't think about them. 
Um, um, well, I can't say I've spent my entire life uh, studying the ways of the Honda Civic, but I mean, if, if that's something that interests you, then more for you. I mean, Honda Civic's obviously known for being one of the greatest cars ever created, just behind the LaFerrari and pretty much <laughs> any Lamborghini ever made. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it is a legendary car. It's, it's also up there with a the Nissan Micra, perhaps, but uh, yeah, it's not one that I've really devoted my life's attentions to. I've got to say, but thank you for the follow, Eddie. Yeah, thank you for the follow and thank you for the question. If you've got any more questions, do get them in. Sunday night is tea and biscuit talk. Speaking of which, yes, I do I have, have some... Uh, set of jammy dodgers, actually, on <laughs> yeah. this side. Just out of my reach at the moment, which is starting to frustrate me a little bit. I might have to, uh, I might have to act on that and bring them a little bit closer to my mouth, but uh, <laughs> right now we're riding on board anyway with Steel Curtain, before I start drooling over, ja uh, over the fort of a jammy dodger, Steel Quick Curtain shout still out. within a second here. Shout out to the biscuits that I've got, but digestives, and the British chocolate digestives, which are all these cream versions, you know. Sam plays a mama who has mysterious ways, stream, he uh, Strawberry and cream digestives is something I've never heard of. Well, that's not. Still rather on board at the moment with Steel Curtain. Within a second of Whiffy, this is going to be a battle that goes right down to the wire, I think, and it will definitely come down to penalties here. Just behind them, actually, Hammer Joe is beginning to reel them in. He is only two seconds off now. It, that gap was up at about four seconds a few laps ago, so it's definitely going to be a battle between them. As we see, Cod has had a bit of a moment. He's just yeah. doing some pirouettes for us, going down the hangar straight at the moment. As we see Bradley Johnson lapping here, but... Yeah, Cod, I think he's picked up more damage to the car there. Uh, he is actually without a front wing at the moment as he takes a bit of a detour here at Stowe, showing off to all the fans, showing us the lovely scenery of this uh, Silverstone circuit, which we very much appreciate him for doing. And into the pits he comes. He'll be coming in for what I think is his third pit stop of the race here. We'll go back to the battle here over P2. Wiffy win uh, winner. Only half a second behind Steel Ooh. Curtain. Oh. Is that Bradley who's won? Yeah. He's saw the yellow flags Carl on the mini-map. Second behind. Black Villain retires in the pits. So he's Unlucky called it a day. He's realised he's not going to get any points. And he's, he's decided to call it. Unlucky. Unlucky, Unlucky there Unlucky. for him. Card has officially been battered in this race. <laughs> Bat Pun intended, yeah. I will get my coat. This is I'm sorry I'm handing wing. in my resignation after that joke. <laughs> uh, still curtain though, still half a second behind Whiffy. He's just not quite able to get close enough to make an overtake yet in this race, but he has two more laps, including this one, to try and make a move. And behind them, Hammer Joe has two more laps to try and close in within a second of them and try and get past the both of them to try and get P2 if he wants to, but he does leave the session here, which is a bit unfortunate timing to say the least. Sam will try and get him back in for the last couple of laps before he loses too much time, but I think this basically signifies the end of his challenge for the podium here. He's already dropped uh, half, one and a half seconds to steal Curtain there, so... Unfortunate for Hammer Joe, he's done well to close that gap. Hopefully he'll get back in before Entrusted closes up too much on him. And, yeah, yeah Hammer Joe's internet has probably yeah. been powered by potatoes today. It's not been the greatest. Still Curtain refusing back. to dump any of his batteries, saving it all for the last lap. He's going to have a big yeah, push of whiffy really in the last going, lap. Uh, yeah, he's really saved up a lot more than he needed to there, I think. Whiffy only on 5% as he came into uh, as he came into Vale there. He only had 5% battery. He's got a little bit more now, but using overtake coming across the start-finish line, he is really running on empty here. And still Curtin with 50% left of his uh, in his energy recovery system. 
I think he's going to get him here, Steel Curtain. I think he's, he's going to get have him. a real chance. But if he's not going to make, make it easy, but he's definitely going to have a bit. Oh, he gets a bit loose and a bit wobbly. He's lost him a little bit of time. Yeah, it does look like the move's going to be made this time around into the Rooklands, but he still does have one final DRS straight left after the run through Maggots and Beckett's coming down that hangar straight towards Stowe. It is vital that he gets a good exit out of out of Beckett's now if he wants to challenge for that P2 coming into Stowe. We have a yellow flag as Hammer Joe has lost the car and has gone for a little bit of detour on the grass. He loses yeah. a couple of positions and drops down to P6. That's probably him. Oh, and he spins again. Has another little moment there on the power a bit too quick and he runs the risk here of being overtaken by his teammate. As well, reverses out of the way, and there does go Samages. As we now ride on board, is still Curtin, who is right at the back of Wiki, goes around the outside into Stone. Gets it done. Gets the move done. Brilliant move there by Steel. He left it late, he got it done. And it's Flanders who crosses the line, though, meanwhile, to take the win here for the British Grand Prix. But we ride on board with Wiki, he's right up the back. Still Curtin, they cross the line, it is going to be second place Ooh. Still Curtin by just two tenths of a second crossing the line from Wiffy, but he did have three seconds more of penalties, which means it's actually a 3.2 second gap. That's Wiffy in third, Entrusted takes P4, Budweiser on 20 lap old, Hards takes P5, a good drive from the Mercedes driver there. It'll be Samichers who takes P6 Sandwiches ahead in P6. of his teammates. Yeah, ahead of his teammate Hammer Joe, who will come home lagging his way as he goes in P7. Laps down. <laughs> uh, he's taking it nice and slow across the finishing line. He's soaking up all the glory and Whoa. Jesus Christ sending it absolutely to Narnia into the wall. And that's how you finish a race in style there from Hammer Joe, who apparently in finishes in P2. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. I think we'll just that's a void as well. I think we'll tell to play that. Meanwhile, Cole. Yeah, a bit of a weird one there from Hammer Joe. Uh, everyone else has crossed the line. Meanwhile, we will take you down the running order as we see it. Hammer Joe, obviously his results will be one that we have to keep an eye on. We'll we'll figure out what's actually going to happen with that. He gets driver of the day, and I mean, <laughs> I think the fact that his internet the spectacle has survived alone. this. <laughs> yeah, for the for the Narnia sends alone, he probably deserves it. His pirouettes were quite special during that race, but it is stupid Flanders who takes home the big 30 points in this race. And Zampa said before the race that for, you know, a good result today could really help him in the titles, uh, well, in the standings altogether. And well, he's gone and got the race win. I'm not sure if he got the fastest lap. We'll check that in a second. <coughs> but he goes and gets the race win. Radar slips up. Rawling slips up. He's really boosted his chances this season there with that win. Spinner with the big cheer. GG Flanders he says. Yeah, GG Flanders. Cole straight away in the chat. Wow, what a race. Yeah, really good race. And Madness. I just want to point out the inspirational scenes continue here for Hammer Joe with a 48 second fastest lap <laughs> absolutely incredible there that is something special aside Mega. from that lap time which will obviously we will probably be reviewed afterwards but aside from that it is Radar who takes home the fastest lap point here he finishes in P8 so he did manage to recover nicely there uh, as best he could from what was a pretty annoying start you saw the guys who started on the front row of the grid only finishing in P14, well, not finishing, he DNF'd Rawlings, but coming, at, uh, getting P14 and P8 for Radar. There's uh, the front row really not managing it well, but P3, 4 and 5 profiting massively to get P1, 2 and 3 respectively there. And I think Zampa's now going to send out the invites to the guys on the podium. I mean, we could yeah. get Hammer Joe in just for... <laughs> because why not? But I feel like it'd probably be more fair to get in, uh, get in Flanders and uh, yeah. Steel. With you back in the uh, podium party, he had a week off last week. wasn't very happy. But he's back this week. Yeah, so got Carl Wiffy, saying Flanders. what a race in the chat there. You're not wrong, Carl. That was a good one. I mean, if if nothing else, just the motivational scenes with uh, <laughs> with Hammer Joe. That was something special there. 
but we'll wait for everyone to join in with the party. Big mad race. Mad race. Mad race. I already, I already took my Make box. sure you have ticked right. your box, Flanders. We'll get everyone in. Oh. Everyone's had an invite. Who we'll we'll wait for everyone here. Riffy and Kurt. And yeah, we'll wait for everyone here. I'll we'll have a chat with them. Are we gonna invite him to <laughs> I mean, a four, it was a special lap time, not 48 seconds. But... Yeah, I saw Radar got the fastest actual time, so give it to him. Yeah, Radar got a, uh, was the only driver to make it into the 127s during that race, so he will pick, no doubt pick up that fastest lap point unless we uh, you... we randomly give it to Hubba Joe. <laughs> Can you open the party? Lap, but... Because Wiffy can't seem to join even though I've invited him. I certainly can't. There we go. Send him another one. Make sure you take your box. How many viewers did we pull for this one, guys? Um, it was a good. Uh, uh, in the party the chat, there's an option we were up in the 20s. to make sure your audio is heard on the stream. We were up in the Just 20s. make sure that's tit so everyone can hear you. Oh, God. I've sent with you a couple more invites. I'll be back in a sec. You go, GB. Well, we will get this underway, but hopefully Wiffy will be able to join. I'll also send him an invite myself, but Flanders, if you will take us through your race, I mean, you you profited where everyone else messed up pretty much in that one, with Rawlings and Radar messing up their their own races. You've managed to come home and take home the big points today. Yeah, holy shit, that was, that was pretty nuts. This is actually my first my first ever win in, in league racing, so I'll actually remember, I will remember this one. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty unfortunate. The race was a bit boring. I only did two overtakes on track, of course, one on radar at the start, and then Hammer Joe on lap four. Um, yeah, really weird, really weird race, especially with Rawlings crashing out at the beginning. He was the one guy that I knew had the pure race pace to keep up with me, no matter what, but uh, yeah, so I was kind of fortunate that he crashed at the start. And um, yeah, once I got some clear air and Hammer Joe bend it as well. I, I just pumped into laps on the softs. Got a huge gap to Wiffy. I, I don't know how I pulled that much pace out on considering how dominant he's been at times, but um, yeah, first stint was basically total perfection. Um, yeah, then I went on to the mediums. Decent stint as well. I, I really had my only major mistake uh, on my 15. I was in Brooklyn's and I was just getting a little too aggressive with the throttle on the exit and I very, very nearly spun. If you guys caught that and um, yeah, uh, that was very close. And after that, I just backed off a little bit because it, it was it was a marathon at the end of the day, uh, and I was pushing yeah. every single lap like it was a sprint. Like I've never been that consistent before, lap time wise. I set my personal best lap on the penultimate lap when the tires were at like 50%, and um, I was usually lapping within two or three tenths of my best, which was a really good feeling. I just got in the zone like I never had before. The car felt just alive. I had an excellent setup, high downforce. And uh, it was sort of a gamble, but it paid off. Yeah, well, we I don't think we did catch you a little moment coming out of uh, Brooklyn's there, so we'll we'll paper over that one and just say it was pretty much the perfect race here today. Uh, aside from that little wobble there, we'll move on to, uh, I think it was Steel Curtain who got what will be eventually P2. I think Hammer Joe will be downgraded a bit after well, managing to teleport his way up into P2. No, uh, but yeah, still <coughs> decent race for you there. You left it late to get past Wiffy to get that second place. Uh, just talk us through your race. It's a pretty impressive effort. You know, I had done a lead race here last weekend. I got P3, so I was feeling somewhat confident in trying to having a good race here and then like in the start i don't know what happened to radar i think it was happening to mclaren that he went off and then he was kind of sideways on the track and almost hit him yeah i think he hit and me into village and uh, uh -huh. that might have given him some wing damage or made him unstable or whatever i think i got real close to hit him or he might have ghosted like the last second before i hit him and then after that i was able to kind of stay up and then i know whiffy i saw whiffy was behind me and so i I kind of got, but not really, because I just I just knew he had more pace than me, and then so after he passed me, I was just basically just trying to hang on. I know I'll, I'll usually get penalties when I race, so I was just trying to hang on, get the uh, DRS from him, create the gap for fourth, and then towards the end I was always kind of catching up, and then but I would make a mistake coming out of the corner, and 
throughout the end of this sentence, went for it, tried to overtake him. And then, but I think he still had penalties. I might have still been able to got in P2, even if I was to P3. Yeah, he did have three seconds more than you in the end, and you only finished two tenths of a second ahead of him. It was, it was very close between the two of you, but a dramatic finish with that move around the outside into Stowe is a really good move. A uh, really clean racing between the two of you. We'll move on to Whiffy. Uh, make sure you got your box ticked if you haven't I do. already in, in the party. Uh, I mean, take us through your race. It was so close to P2 uh, at the end if it wasn't for that move around the outside of Stowe uh, by Steel, but very consistent from the both of you and a decent podium. Yeah, uh, qualifying didn't go as planned. We'll just put it that way. Qualifying didn't work very well. Uh, one lap pace I kind of knew was going to be questionable at best. Uh, so I was like, all right. And then we got in the race. I got lucky with that radar stuff. The start was kind of weird. Like, um, I. I kind of got up on the back of Flanders quicker than I thought, and then uh, I'm not even sure if it was Steel Curtain or I think it was actually maybe Budweiser, but I kind of got boxed in and was just kind of like in for the moment. And then from there, just made the overtakes when it counted, and Steel Curtain and I just, I, I break DRS, but it took all the battery I had to break DRS, and then he could just reel back in that little bit with battery, and it was just back and forth, back and forth. I knew I had to just keep it honest, and he. He pushed me into a couple mistakes straight out. Yeah, like I, uh, a couple corners, I just, I couldn't get the traction down when I wanted, or I just, I'd, I'd cut a little harder than I needed to. And uh, before I knew it, you know, I had a couple penalties. The last one really stuffed me because I was just kind of like, okay, like whatever. And I was never really worried about maybe finishing off the podium, but more so dropping completely off from P3 because I knew behind him was Hammer Joe and Entrusted, who are. Both were like pretty rapid and consistent, so I was kind of hit or miss if I was even going to be here or not, to be honest with you. But uh, congrats goes out to Flanders because like, dude had it from day one, uh, took it from the lap one all the way to the end. That's always a good feeling when you go go the distance, man. So congrats, huge on you, big big ups there. And uh, Steel Curtain, man, I mean, I can't ask for a better better battle, man. That was just that was 26 laps of pure friggin' fun, man. Pure yeah, friggin' fun. fun. Yeah, I was yeah. watching the Delta with you and Steel Curtain, and you guys were always within a second of each other, and I was just thinking, God yeah. damn, I wish I was over there. <laughs> yeah, it was just, yeah, it was, yeah, it it was, was, it was fantastic. And then you were 10 seconds ahead. Yeah. yeah. And it was a great battle for us to watch as well. We were watching it throughout the race, so you two just constantly going at each other, and we are thinking, when is when <sighs> is uh, Steel going to make the move here? Because he was I, constantly I, within oh. that one second, and yeah. he, well, he I left it ran. late, and... I ran out of battery on the last straightaway in the last lap. To be not saying that's my excuse as why I got passed, but straight in. That was the only reason I could stay ahead was because I had battery. And then that last lap, I had to use all of it to get into fucking buckets and nuggets. And then as soon as I got there, man, I was like, oh, no, I got nothing left to go DRS. I'm like, he's going to have a run, damn it. Yeah, it I had like it, it was what left. it was. Oh, yeah, so you were coming yeah, to my way. Yeah, we're, we're what right it was. on board with both of you and comparing the ERS towards the end, and we said, like, Steel had really managed his ERS yeah. well during that race to Absolutely. still have so much left. Uh, Absolutely. But, no, great race between you guys. Uh, I mean, we won't break your heart and say that Hammer Joe actually got the podium. <laughs> uh, instead, no you worries. Will, will no ignore worries. that fact and his 48 second fastest yeah. lap of the race. Yeah. As soon as I saw yeah. the fastest yeah. lap of Silver yeah, yeah, ever. I, I could have sworn. I, thought, I figured well, he, um, he might get yeah, like, we saw like that a as well. 30 second penalty because that's kind of how much he gained if we're being honest. He went so early before the lights. He was like half a lap ahead. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah we, it's this one that we've definitely... Uh, there is a way, to, uh, this has happened before, that to anyone watching or who is thinking how the fuck do we work out his finishing time, but there is a way and I've already got it covered, it will be sorted, so yeah, it was just nuts, really unlucky for him. It, it was, I've said in the stream a few times, it was very inspirational to watch him uh, teleport to Narnia and then back to Silverstone and then over to Melbourne and yeah, Hammer Joe was all so over the scary. place. So. Like honestly, when I, <laughs> I was really scared to be near him and when I when I went for the move into Stowe on lap four, I just, yeah, I gave him so much space and took such a tight line in, but worked out in the end, got the braking right and uh, he careered off into the distance eventually, next lap when he tried to come back. Well, he was shout also out like right for, behind uh, me after that. <laughs> quick shout out to so Hammer Big drive for sandwiches today. Well done, Fode. Yeah, so, folks, viewers, good next race is Hungary. Good drive from everyone today. <laughs> next race is Hungary. Come back here. Come back here for next yeah, week. Ne
Like Flanders says, next up we are off to Magyar Nagidic for the Hungarian Grand Prix I don't have to go. around the Hungaroring. Uh, obviously, I had to call it Magyar Nagidic. It's a crime not to, but we'll be back <laughs> next weekend, 10 p.m. UK. Actually, is it 10 p.m. UK time? With yeah. the clock's moving yeah. forward, it's yeah. 9 yeah. p.m., isn't it? No, 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 normal time. Is it still 10? Yeah. Yeah, all the same time. Okay. All the same time. Big funk. So, Which you can see in the ticker at the bottom of the stream. Yeah. yeah, if you look down at the bottom of the stream, 10 pm UK time, we'll be back for the Hungarian Grand Prix, tier 2, the first race of the weekend, then tier 1 at midnight on Saturday, and then tier 3 again midnight on Sunday. I'm sure there'll be streams during the race as well, so keep your eyes out for those. If you haven't followed already, make sure you follow. That's it for us today. Okay. Thank you, Zampa, for helping with the commentary. Thank you, everyone, for racing. Great job from Zamp, as always. Thank you for, uh, for your efforts this weekend, GB. Really good. No problemo. And, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. We will see you for the next stream, or if not, next weekend, for Tier 2 around Magyar Nagadic on Saturday night, 10pm UK time. GG's. GG's.